Good morning, our Bible study. Today, we take you to the King James 1611. Time limits us to get into all that we can get into. But first, I want to make a quotation from the new King James Version. Now, let me tell you the new King James Version of the Bible, the new one. That's worse. Because it's almost identical. And yet those changes are slick. So it says, for the past several centuries, English-speaking people have cherished the King James Version of the Bible. I do. This love does not come from a desire to preserve a tradition of tradition's sake. Rather, the opposite is true. The King James Version has become a tradition because it is love for its scholarly literacy form and devotional quality. I love it because it is the actual Word of God and no other. During its long history, the translation has been revised in accordance with changes in English speech and in our growing knowledge of the original text of the scripture. Just leave it alone. And we'll talk about some of those changes. Now the King James Bible has been uh, challenged by the New King James Bible. It has been challenged by the NIV. It has been challenged by the NASB. It's been challenged by all the modern Bibles. And yet not one Bible challenges the New King James Bible. Not one Bible challenges the NIV. The King James Bible comes from Syria. Antioch. Syria. Comes from Antioch. The New King James comes from Westcar and Hort, Alexandria. The identical people who work on the New King James also operate on the New International and the New American Standard Bible. So there were people on the New King James, on the New International, and the New American Standard Bible. So, now the King James Bible translated out of the original tongue and with previous translations diligently compared and revised. And we'll look at that in a moment. So the actual text of the King James Bible that you use is not the 1611. There have been five revisions of the King James Version of the Bible. Yes, the King James Bible has been revised. And it's been revised five times. In 1629, the first revision, 18 years after the King James Bible, it came out in 1611. The second revision came out nine years later, 1638. 120 years later, 1762. Seven years later, 1769. And 200 years, it has not been changed. And the fifth one is the New King James Version. In the 1769 and the 1611, there were few changes. Are you ready for some of those changes? For the letter F, as in Frank, frankincense. In 1611, which is actually our English letter S, as in styling, as in salvation, as in Savior. So what they did was, like, the King James Bible I have has music. M-U-S-I-C-K. And there are, there are words in my King James Bible, if you go to the dictionary... The King James Bible has an extra letter. Those were the changes. 
from the spelling of the 1611 to the spelling throughout later years. The revision separate the New King James Bible of the King James Bible did not remove and did not subtract and did not add words to the Bible. They did not subtract verses of the Bible as the New King James and other Bibles have done. All they did is made it more presentable in today's English language. Now, I know this for a fact because uh, 2010-2011 when I went through New England Connecticut in Rhode Island doing separatist church history before they were called Baptists. Before they were called Baptists, they were called separatists. And one of our search and studies were we would visit old cemeteries. And I got a book somewhere here of one of the cemeteries we visited, and they actually wrote down all the inscriptions upon the tombstone that could be read. Rain, wind, snow, and time. Some of those tombstones you can't read or forever been erased. But you would be amazed that when you read that tombstone, the F's and the S's and the other letters you would look at, and you would look at that like, what is that word? And then when you study the Old English, okay, I see what that word is now. Well, that's what it is. They didn't change the words, they just put the spelling so we would look at that word. Oh, okay. And they left something, like I said, music. Some King James Bibles has music with a K. Nothing wrong with that. Some Bibles don't. But when you're in Acts chapter 7, and you mess with the word Joshua, and you mess with the word Jesus, in King James Bibles, you got a problem. When you remove... The Ethiopian eunuch talking to Philip and, and profess that he believes in Jesus. When you remove that, you got a problem. Okay. 1603 AD. King James was on his way to London to accept the English crown. He was offered with a request of compliments by the clergy holding Puritan conviction. Now, the Puritans are the ones that came over on the Mayflower. So the Puritans are in the history. The strict living. The Puritans today would make your average Baptist in the Laodicean church age. I wonder if they're saved. And the Puritans were strict. Today, we're unstrict. The Puritans. The Apocrypha, which Lord willing will look at, I believe, the next study. The Apocrypha is the section of the Roman Catholic Bible. I don't believe it, it's there. I don't believe the Holy Spirit inspired it. I believe it's... get rid of it. And if I were to get a King James Bible that has the Apocrypha, I would get me one of them glue sticks. Give me one of these glue sticks. I will glue all the pages of the Apocrypha together so I won't even have to look at it. If I couldn't properly tear it out of the Bible myself. But if I try to tear it out, I might mess up the Bible. Which is a separate section in the King James Bible. To be taken out of the Bible. Amen! The Puritans did not want the Apocrypha. I'm with the Puritans. The greatest theologians, Bible scholars of church history were the Puritans. Charles Spurgeon was in this institution of the Puritans, the Puritan belief. So when a lot of 
they're called Spurgeon on Facebook and they'll raise a Spurgeon quote in a pulpit. He was on the, the Puritan belief, as were many of the scholars and theologians. Strict. Anti reason. And yet the most reasonable men ever. But anti reason would mean indifference to the Roman Catholic to them. Who hinge on seriously on the human reason and tradition, never mind what the Holy Spirit said, never mind what God said, never mind what the Bible says, what our Pope says and what tradition says is the foundation of the devil of the satanic Roman Catholic Church. They were scholars who used hours on the theory, I mean on the theology of the Bible and nothing else. In other words, they read and they studied the Bible. And they read and they studied the Bible. And they read and they studied the Bible. And when they had a problem, they checked with the Bible, not tradition. The ones who chiefly got the changes, where the Apocrypha would no longer be listed as a separate section. It had no business being in there in the first place. And like I said, we'll look at the Apocrypha, Lord willing, next time. King James came, the King James Bible came because of the Puritans insisted King James. So the King James Bible came by the Puritans insisting King James for a Bible. And I quote, a conference for hearing and for determining of those pretended to be a mist in the church. End of quote. So the Puritans wanted King James. We want an exact word of God. We don't want the Catholic nonsense. We don't want the traditional nonsense. And we want it in our language. You say, well, you know, the modern Bible, here's what they do. No, the modern Bibles put it in the language of Satan. Written by the flames and the sulfur of hell. Because the modern Bibles remove and add to the text. King James 6011 does not do that. And I've had people say, well, you know, the Bible's written by men. I say, yes, it was. And the pen, the pen is man. And the ink is the Holy Spirit. That's the difference. You see, Shakespeare held a pen and wrote. And God did not speak to Shakespeare as he wrote. Mark Twain took a pen and wrote. But God was not in the writing of Mark Twain. And Mark Twain wrote wonderful things. Um, I can't think of his name now, but uh, Sherlock Holmes. I can't think of that. I'm a vivid reader of Sherlock Holmes, and I can't remember the writer. But the pen of the writer is not the writings of the Holy Spirit. Now, when Daniel, when Moses, when Paul, when Peter, when James took that pen and put it to paper, the words that went on that paper were the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not in a New King, King James Bible. The Holy Spirit is not in the NIV. The, the Holy Spirit is not in any modern Bible. The Holy Spirit is in the words, in the, in the language, in the writings, and in the ink of a King James 611 Bible. That was came to us by the Puritans. You know, they changed history. They came over on the Mayflower. They had turkey dinner. They had stuff. That's a lie. 
And the very ones that came over on the Mayflower, the Puritans came over, and they didn't come over with the King James Bible. They came over with the sister Bible, the King James. They came over with the Geneva Bible which is in the family of the King James Bible, which is from Antioch. And the Geneva Bible came by the blood of Christians who died for the Word of God. And King James' own family bloodshed by the church. Now, the Puritans, it was a conference for hearing and for powerful, excuse me, powerful of things pretended to be incorrect in the church. Now, pretend is, there are questions. There has things that have been raised. Was Peter the first pope? Did Mary not have any children? I heard this guy say, thus saith the Lord. Did he say the Lord? Well, we need a Bible so we can check it out. Why don't you think the Catholic Church does not want its people to read the Bible? Because if you read the Bible, you will see that the Catholic Church is in great error. Listen, I, before I was saved, April 25th, 1987, I, I am Polish. My grandpa's side of my family, Polacks, Polish, 100% Polish. My family came over, Ellis Island, ended up in New London County, Connecticut. They were Polish Roman Catholics. That's Catholic. S secondary only to Italian Catholic. And you say, well, and people ask, well, how do you witness to your Catholic family? Simple. You tell them the gospel, and then you get them to read the Bible. And politely and kindly show them passages in the Bible. Many of those Catholics don't realize that the Bible says, Call no man your father. Now, only one would study the apologetics of the Catholic Church and to defend for the Catholic Church against the Bible people. They would know that. But your typical Catholic person that sits in the pew, sits in the pew on Easter or Christmas, or doesn't sit in the pew, they don't know much. Thank God. And you can get them, if you, you just get to, hey, let me show you what the Bible says here. Hey, you know, would you do me a favor? You know, you, you call yourself a Christian. And you, 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 Church, you know, would you just read slowly the Gospel of John? You can get them in the Bible, and if their heart is not totally given over to the church, the Catholic Church, the Holy Spirit can work. So there are pretends there are. Thus saith the Lord. Well, what is thus saith the Lord? The Bible. Three days, January 14th to the 16th, in 1604, was known as the Hampton Court Conference. How many Christians have gone on a vacation and stayed at the Hampton Court Hotel? You know the Hampton Court Hotel. How come you don't know the Hampton Court of the King James Bible? I know pastors, they're completely, they're stupid on church history. Never mind Bible history. They don't know nothing. Last pastor I dealt with, don't know nothing about history and don't tell him about history. I tried to show him that Easter is wrong. I tried to show him the foundation of Easter and Christmas. They don't want to hear it. Sure don't want to hear about the Bible. So the Hampton Court. The head of the Puritan movement, Dr. John Reynolds, or Reynolds, R-A-I-N-O-L-D-S, made the motion for a new translation of the Bible would be commenced. So on January 14, 16, 
1604, the Puritan said, oh, anybody got a motion? I got a motion. What's that? I think we need a new Bible translation. You know, a, a, a business meeting, a Baptist meeting, second motion, third motion. And with that, these, these writings were documented. The majority was against the motion. Uh -oh. They were against it. But it appealed to King James. So he ordered that it be commenced. Uh, the, the meeting, uh, Mr. Reynolds, Dr. Reynolds, no. We're doing perfectly fine. King James said, hey. I'm going to fund it. I'm going to set it for it. Now, King James, though his name is on the King James Bible, he, he paid for, he put the community into action, but he had nothing to do with the Bible writing. Don't think, well, King James was right there with it. No, he paid for it. He set it up and put it in motion. So there were 54 of the greatest Bible or biblical scholars, unlike the scholars today. They knew what they were doing. They studied the Word of God. Who recognized the original language in Great Britain, and they knew the other languages. They were well-educated men of God and languages, and they were taken together. These were no morons. They weren't worldly men. All right, here's what happened. They were separated into six groups. These 54 men, nine in each assembly. Nine is the number of the Holy Spirit. So you have 54 scholars. And I don't mean the word scholars today. I mean they were educated, they were smart, they were of the Holy Ghost, they knew languages, they were 54, and they were divided into nine, number of the Holy Spirit, groups. I mean, excuse me, six groups with nine men together. And they would get various passages of the Bible. These groups. The motivated article is the respectively of the group. Whatever section they were assigned, they had to submit the, submit the final resolution on it to the other five groups. So, let's say this group had the Gospel of Matthew, and they went through the Gospel of Matthew, and they wrote it out. They would submit Matthew, what they wrote, to the other five groups and they would review Matthew that was just done. And that's not it. Gospel, just, just mention Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew would later go to another group. And they would review, it was reviewed and reviewed and reviewed and reviewed. Through these six groups, these nine men, and when they, Matthew, I'm just mentioning Matthew, but when they handed Matthew over to the, the five groups, the five groups would have to vote 100%. We're talking about Matthew. Matthew. One guy said, well, wait a minute, I don't think this passage here. Why is that? And then he would give his evidence. All right, take the entire Gospel of Matthew, throw it in the garbage, do it again. And when you throw it in the garbage, burn it. Because we sure don't want the Vaticanus or the Synecatechus. I forget which one was found in the garbage. Vaticanus or Synecatechus was found in the garbage. So, if it did not get 100% approval by the five groups, for the King James Bible, it was tossed out and redone and resubmitted. This is your King James Bible. 
This wasn't sitting over having cigarettes and cigars and Coca-Cola and telling dirty, nasty jokes. But they probably do today. And there were no lesbians on this group. And one of the one of the modern Bibles had a lesbian on the committee. No, 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 no. Not the King James. They went to very much check and balances. They made sure of approval that the Bible they would produce is the Word of God. Absolutely that no text would be considered without fervent prayer. They would read a passage. All right, everybody get together. Lord God, we're not really sure. We think it's so. Lord God, will you invite us to, before we set this to, to be, that you will say it is to be, or it's not. Lord God, the Father, through the Holy Spirit, is what the passage we're looking at. Do you approve of this work, or do you not approve it? In the name of Jesus Christ. This is your King James. I doubt the modern Bibles went through this. Urban prayer. They spent hours in prayer. Hours in prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. I have my King James Bible here. It is the word of God for sure, because they spent hours of prayer ashore. I'm sorry for my singing. Maybe I give you a little, so your dog, can, you calm your dog down. <laughs> sorry, I sing terrible. I was in the church, they had me in the choir. They lied to me, you know, you're a good singer, we have in the choir. You liars. And the Bible says, make a joyful noise. Hee <laughs> hee, that's me. They spent hours in prayer requesting God to attend to them before they ever underway to examine the text and all the manuscripts that were available to them. So before they began work, they spent hours in prayer. When they had a passage, let's take Luke 8, 30, 8 12. I don't know what that bad, but H1. Lord, we're not sure. All right, everybody, let's get to prayer. Romans 1 12. I'm not, we're not sure. All right, everybody, get in prayer. All right, we finished Matthew. Hand it off to the to the to the, to the five committees. All right, everyone in prayer. Uh, I, I call this the question. Everybody in prayer. I really believe that this is correct. Everybody in prayer. Your King James Bible came by blood, sweat, and tears, and prayer. The Holy Bible containing the Old Testament and the new, newly translated out of the original tongue, and the former translation diligently compared and revised by His Majesty's commandment. King James commanded, appointed to be read in all churches. You know any churches that don't have the King James? They wrote on the title page, this is to be read by all churches. I don't care if you don't believe. I don't care if you got a Lutheran church. I don't care if it's a Catholic church. I don't care if it's a Mormon church. I don't care. You are to read in all churches. Imprinted in London. Now, be read in all churches. All right, we know church is not a building. A body in Christ is the church. It is to be read by all Christians. The body of Christ, the church. Do you believe every Christian reads the King James Bible? Do you believe every Christian has the King James Bible? And printed in London by Robert Barker, printed to the King's Most Excellent Majesty 
Anno Dom 1611 is the official title. Preface to the original 1611, the translator said that their purpose was, now here's the purpose, quote, not to make a new translation, but to make a good one better, end of quote. Now let's go back to the meeting of January 14th to 16th, 1604 at the Hampton Court. Dr. John Reynolds made a motion of a new translation of the Bible. Majority rejected it. The king ordered it. And the translator said, we're not making a new one. We're making, the, we're making it better. How do you like that? The modern Bibles make a new, new, not better. They make it new because they change and add and subtract. The work of the King James Bible is indebted to the work of William Tyndale. It is correct that the chief addition to the scriptures used by the Roman Catholic Church for over a thousand years was Jerome's Latin Vulgate. Remember, Vulgate meant vulgar, common language. Not many people held to the Latin. We did a study the other night about uh, Peter. Uh, my brain today. Waldo. Peter Waldo grabbed a Latin Bible and he wasn't very really good on that. So he hired people to come, scholars, to help him get a Bible so he could read it. Consulted the manuscripts that were available to them in the Greek, which did primarily deal with what we call the Brazilian text. The Brazilian text. I wish we can go more. I wish we can go deeper. But we're going to stop right there. Lord willing, next time we're going to look at the Apocrypha.